Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is episode 104. We're uh, exploring Germany. I'm going to say Germany this month. I don't, might be less than that. But for right now, I'm going to... I'm going to stay in Germany and well, and start doing Neofly jobs from here at EDWU. That's going to be my new home base for a while. Get out of general options here. So, in an attempt to learn Germany and the surrounding areas, then start moving on from here, um, the best way I've found is to just do a bunch of Neofly jobs, fly back and forth between different airports and Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. There's Henning in the chat room. Hello. Going to set up here at the runway. I'd like to start cold and dark, but I've been having a, a bug where if I load cold and start, uh, cold and dark... Then uh, the plane is frozen, it won't move. So right at the moment to work around the problem until I figure out exactly what it is, I have to set up on the runways itself. You go ahead and open NeoFly today. See what kind of jobs we can get. I finished one up at the end of the day yesterday, did one run, made 13 grand, not too shabby. Oh, I'm so sad. Everything was going great with that pretzel app and me playing music. And then all of a sudden in the last, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks, every track on every live stream is getting flagged. It, that's hours worth of work. That's a day's worth of work to edit out all the music. So I'm not happy with their company and they're saying, well, we only said it would be good for a day and anything after that. Ha 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 ha. Hello, so it very, seems very much like fraud, so I'm just... I canceled my pretzel subscription today. Ready for engine start. And now the same company that is that launched Pretzel... Contact the tower for clearance. ...seems to be working with... Streamlabs, who does the uh, OBS stuff. And now they're saying, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll now go ahead and provide copyright-free music. Uh, okay, so they wouldn't do that for pretzel, but they'll go ahead and work with live streams now So I guess it's fall of the money. I don't know what's going on. I'll, I'll um I'll be looking into it. It was a vanity thing and I've been spending ten bucks a month not even making that much in return on the videos So just wasting money and it, it's so it's it's too bad because man There's nothing better to me than flying and listening to music and uh, it's a real shame that I that I at the moment can't do that. I really wish we could just listen to radio, you know, or I wish that the YouTube live stream service was a little bit more advanced. So we could have separate audio streams, uh, so that we could have a music channel, but it won't record it. Something like that. You know what I mean? My daughter's a live streamer. She's like, well, I use Twitch and I use all this other stuff that I don't even know how to use. And she's like, we all listen to music. How do you all listen to music? Well, we've got our own audio stream. Our own audio track. I'm like, well, what does that mean? That it doesn't broadcast on Twitch. How? I don't even understand actually how it's possible or how they're able to do something like that. But if they are, kids these days, they're so much smarter than us. Yeah, so Madonna's gone. Um, What Pretzel did is they were charging me, they're charging me 10 bucks a month. And they say all of our music is YouTube safe for live streams. And that's how they got me. They said for live streams. Okay, so I do live streams. And then for a while there, it was just like, if one or two disputes would come up, you could go over to 
to Pretzel and file your dispute, and they would handle it with YouTube so that the tracks would, you know, allow you to monetize. And then they got a lawyer in there, and they said, well, we said for live streams. Therefore, the music is only good for the day of your live stream. And after that, all those artists can then claim monetization on your tracks, which is fine. I wouldn't care if they were to use the share option and split revenues. But what they're doing now is they're flagging it all as a copyright violation, and it turns off the monetization on the live stream. Instead of sharing it and everybody getting a point zero 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 one of a penny, they choose to just not allow me to monetize at all. So, yeah. So no music for right now. I've got it on the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator music. I don't know if it'll play music. I I never have it on, so I'll go ahead and set that up. But knowing uh, YouTube and actually kind of knowing Microsoft when it comes to music, none of their products are very good. Like any of their video makers, which offer free music for making videos on in Windows. All those end up getting uh, flagged as well. So I've been using their uh, Microsoft Video Maker to make certain videos, and then I'll add music to it, and then I'll upload them. And all the Microsoft free music gets flagged. It's like, but it's... But, but... It's really frustrating. All right, so here's NeoFly. Let me actually just turn the damn plane off so we don't hear the the beeping. Okay, so we are here at EDWU which is uh, the home airport for Henning and Hans, uh, my German friends. And I don't know anything about Germany, so we're going to use this as home base for a while. Now I really want to get the camping kit so I can set up our camping kit. I guess it stays persistent. So I guess I'm going to spend some money this month. It might be on that. So I guess if you lay out your camping kit, put out your animals, your pets, dogs, cats, whatever it is, and you fly around, when you come back, it's still there. It remains permanent in the world wherever you place it. And then you can start your campfire, and I know that's another vanity thing, but that's actually kind of fun. It makes it, I guess it just adds to the immersion. Other way. Other than that, uh, Henny says we should uh, consider a room at one of the local hotels, which is really a little bit too expensive for me, I think. I think I'd set up a, a tent right over in those trees somewhere. I don't know if anybody would notice. <laughs> okay. Let's go find a job and take off. All right, so I've set it only for 62 miles. I sh uh, and that keeps them short but sweet. Let's see if I can set it to lower than that, 50 miles. Really, it won't give me any... There's so many airports around here, and then it won't give me a job based on 50 miles. There's 24. Minimum. Minimum of 14 miles. 26 miles. Z. EDWN. Went that way yesterday. There's going to towards uh, Bremen again. Yeah, we're going to go straight to Bremen. Yeah, let's uh, see about this job here. So what it is, is this is a passenger job. Bring 10 passengers to Bremen, EDW, EDDW. From dispatch to transporter. Let's take these passengers to their destination. Yeah, let's do that. The passengers are ready to board. I hope you have plenty of room. It looks like they have gone crazy at the duty-free shop. We have plenty of room in this ship of mine. It is the uh, Cessna Caravan, and it's got the room. Two, four, six, eight. Well, a couple of them will have to sit on their in the back. You know, 
And there's no problem. I'd ride back here. Just give me a pillow. A couple of throw pillows. And I would be so happy back here. And then I want to cut this compartment wall out. I want to take it out. Transporter from dispatch. Everyone is on board. Because Let's go. there's some extra room back there that we need for our, our bar and our snacks. And a little tiny emergency porta potty thing. Just in case, you know, some people. Okay. So we've already been cleared for that. Let's turn back on the plane here. Separator. Conditioner on. Propeller all the way up. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Righto. We don't need our, uh, well, that's off. Taxi's off. Landing lights. They usually want them on when you take off. Seatbelt on. That's an operative. No smoking. You know me, I don't mind if you smoke. Crack a window. Dun, 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 dun. What do you mean you can't crack a window? It's a virtual plane. Your imagination, you can crack a window. <laughs> okay. So we're going to E, a D, D, a W. E, D, D, W. Bremen. Enter, enter. And that sets us up in the computer, so it's back behind us five kilometers west of here and I saw it yesterday I know I I was looking at a lake last night you'd mentioned lakes so I was paying attention to the lakes but uh heading saying five kilometers here from here west is a lake with a camping spot and there are also more trees in real life than it looks like in the sim really it's quite a few trees here already the frequency uh, is, by the way, the same as in... Da, 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 da. I don't know what you mean. Um, I've got trees turned down to low, I think, or minimum, or... Yeah, it's probably not showing them all. I need to... Open up window before we get much further. That shows the Google map. Come on. Huh. I'm trying to do a window capture. And show you the screen, and it doesn't want... There we go. So, I'm also working with this here. Try to get familiar with, with things. Okay. Oh, the tower frequency one three two five six five. I normally let the co pilot AI do that, but one three two five six five. Yeah, it's already dialed in one three two five six five. We're clear. All right, let's make some money, shall we? My joystick. Yep, 
Thanks for flying Kin Airways today. I don't know how many frequent flyer points you get for today. Many as you want. You were always the VIP. Got some strong pull to the port side today. Catching some nice Welcome air early you. on. We hope nice. you enjoyed your stay here. We'll look forward to welcoming you back soon. Yeah, oh, well, I'll be back soon. I actually wish there was a way we could get going back to the music. I wish there was a way we could get a license, our own license from our favorite radio station. Like I've got my favorite radio station in town here in Colorado Springs. They play uh, a lot of the music that I like. And it would be nice if I could even get a license to like listen to and broadcast a radio stream. So but man, there just needs to be better ways. There's got to be a better way. And I'm right at the moment. I'm not going to trust Song Trader at the moment because of Pretzel. But I'm going to be look. If they're going to be doing it, other people are going to be doing it. And what I mean is, they're now trying to say they'll provide full copyright music for your live streams and videos, and that you won't ever have a copyright problem. And Again, I don't know why they just didn't do that for Pretzel and just change Pretzel's rules. Um, I don't know what the prices are, but... In, it's 2024, folks. We need a better way. Why YouTube doesn't just create their own radio channels, radio stations in agreement with all of these musicians and companies that they work with and allow us to just get a dang music license directly from them like ASCAP just you know I mean they got YouTube TV they got a subscription for that they got a script subscription for YouTube premium or blah 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 why can't we just get a music subscription Therefore, any music video or music in general that you play on your station, it's just, it's fine. And it splits out all the royalties and da 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 Everybody makes things so complicated. Yeah. I hope, uh, going back to the simulator now, talking about the sim here. Uh, with 2024, they weren't able to really deliver us, um, shared cockpit. And that was a feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator X, shared cockpit with a friend or friends, I guess, you know, um, and I hope they bring that back. It would be so nice to be able to have a friend come in as your co-pilot and and fly with you that way. So I'm really looking forward to 2024 and I hope that they implement the shared cockpit. The old Microsoft Flight Simulator air traffic control used to be a lot of fun too. And uh, that's something that they didn't build into it. So now that they're building it all from scratch, I just can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do. Yeah, I would rather fly myself as well. But like I said, I'm so scared. I've said before, uh, I'm so scared of, uh, I don't mind if I'm flying and I crash and kill myself. I couldn't 
Barrett to uh, have anybody else on board. Let me turn down the engine noise a little bit here. A blowing immersion. Aircraft engine. Yeah. Wow, that was only at 26%. Seems so loud. Still seems loud. And we're away from the plane. I wonder if the electric planes... My flaps are up. I wonder if the electric planes are going to be or have the potential to be silent like the electric car but the the you know the the propeller spinning i'm sure will probably make noise but the engine itself i wonder if the uh, electric plane engines are going to be silent i would hope so personally because you know the microphones and airplanes and if they're so dang loud, you know, you got to wear your headset and then you got to be, they have to have those crappy, you know, airplane mics that noise cancel and it would be so nice to just have it quiet and be like the wind, just being able to, like in a glider, you know, you can hear the wind. And um, that's why I enjoy traveling with people that have electric cars. Uh, it's just so nice to hear everything. You know, I, I'm just not, I'm not a complete advocate of all and all things electric. I mean, I still appreciate internal combustion engines for what they are. Um. But I enjoyed the traveling experience when the when it's nice and quiet. And this is why I liked having music. <laughs> exactly. I did spend a few hours the other day, uh this weekend. I did spend a few hours practicing my gliding uh, and I watched, I don't know, six or seven more videos on the subject. I still can't thermal worth a crap. And there's d definitely something I'm doing wrong where um, I'm catching the edge of thermals and I keep stalling and or tipping over too much. So some way I'm in the controls that I'm using and the way I'm using the controls, I tend to flip the plane over quite a bit. And that's that scares me to death. It makes me think, what am I even gliding for, man? You can't recover from something like that if you're too low. That's too dangerous. Oh, really? And nice, quiet, ultralight engines. Yeah, I'm glad the uh, I'm glad the electric technology is finally catching up with you know, or it's being powerful enough to consider for airplanes. It's that's it's that's wonderful. I'm surprised they haven't introduced micro turbines, micro jets, you know, like RC engines. I mean, even the jets on the Honda jet, I mean, those are micro turbines compared to the airliner turbines. They're so powerful, still so powerful. So for, for, I, I'm surprised that they don't make micro 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 jet engines for 
general aviation planes, you know, so that you have other options. Because once they get going, you know, they don't require a whole lot of fuel. There's a guy out there I was watching on YouTube the other day, and he says the whole airliner industry is a lie. That the amount of time it takes to fuel a plane and the amount of fuel required once the jet is in the air, it's a lie. That the jet's engines really kind of run themselves with enough pressure. And I don't know if that's true or not, but he was making a, a really nice, uh, he had a really nice presentation on how it's all a lie. And that the way the fuel would be moving in the plane would be creating problems and da 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 Implementation of the 777. That here. Gliding engine gliding sounds aren't as comfortable in real life because it's all squeaking. Since the whole airplane is bending and turning in the thermals. Yeah, that's gotta be that's gotta be a uh a trip. Especially if you don't know what's going on. You're you're brand new to flying and every little sound freaks you out. Man, we're already here. Almost. All right, let's call it in. I need to find somebody that has European charts, flight charts. I need the flight charts for, at least for right now, for Germany. So I'll have to check, um, I'll have to see what's available out there for, uh, for flight charts for Germany. Fly left traffic runway 27. And there it is. All right, let's turn off the autopilot. Oh, I'm trying to find tool tips the other day and turned on the wrong tips. <laughs> Your first thermal flight was 13 minutes and you couldn't even walk straight because you were so dizzy afterwards. I can believe it. Spinning in circles, man. I I mean, I get it. When you're when you need to get in a thermal and and climb, but man, yeah, spinning in circles. That's why I don't enjoy the racing. I thought I was really going to enjoy the racing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I really wanted to learn how to to do the race planes. And then I did the race planes for about an hour or so, and I just no. Uh-uh. Going in circles like that and going fast like that, it just, it makes me nauseous. So, I wouldn't mind doing it to learn some of the uh, acrobatics, aerobatics, in race planes and uh, high-performance planes, but, um, yeah. Flying in fast circles over and over again, just not for me. All right, getting slowed down, getting the flaps range here.
I don't see any mountains at all. I haven't seen any mountains at all so far. In this area of Germany. Very flat. I didn't even look to see how much we're going to make on this one. Ah, uh, this one was a $12,000 payout. Alrighty. Nice enough. If they make that kind of money in the real world, man, totally in the wrong career field that took us like 15 minutes twelve thousand dollars for 15 minutes seems like a lot but when you actually count the fuel and everything flying is so expensive and if you have any sort of damages to the plane gosh Super expensive. Just a small tune up is a couple thousand in Neofly. Like a building down there, like an obelisk. All right, more flaps.
Once we get landed, I'll turn on um, bush talk, and we'll see if there's any uh, audio points of interest we can fly to as we pick another job. Some lag. Got a boundary marker. And I think my I think my wheels touch one of those lights. Something. There. That wasn't the softest landing I've seen. Playing the simulator, it's it's lagging on me. Contact ground for your parking assignment, then shut down your engine. Now, Neil Fly doesn't care if you cheat. For example, I'm just going to pull off to the side of the uh, the runway here. I'm not going to go into into the airport. Okay. Now, Neil Fly, it doesn't know any better. And so, what I'll do is go ahead and turn off the plane. Hit continue. And let's see if it Gives me the mission. If not, I guess I will have to go over to transport. There we go. Disembarkation in progress. Stand by. So we're going to make our passengers walk. Get out. Out, out. Thanks for flying. Yeah, you're still a VIP, but out. We all need the exercise. And we'll get paid up here. Transporter from dispatch. Everyone is on the bus. Check that they haven't forgotten anything. Have a nice day. There we go. We're paid. Let's get out of here. Okay. So next job is going to go to a place. Let's see what we have here. I don't know which one pays the best. There's a twenty thousand dollar job, twenty one thousand, twenty three thousand EDWC. That's time sensitive. Those are hard to make. And sensitive cargo, fragile cargo, twenty one thousand dollars to stayed. E H S. Not enough remaining cargo capacity. All right, let me try to clear out my cargo in here. See what we have. Passenger gone.
Okay, so yeah, it is there. No, it still says we don't have enough cargo capacity. That doesn't make any sense. There's one to ED. Uh, silly thing. All right, it says we can do this one here EDWX. That's going to take us northwest to West Westerstead. Zelda. And there's no runway there. They want to land. They they want us to land in a field. There's, it says there's an airport there, and it's got an ICAO, but I don't see a runway there. Unless this field is it. Nah, that's that's helicopter, and we're losing out on the good money. Okay. EDWC. For 12,000. 40 miles. From dispatch to transporter. Let's take these passengers to their destination. The passengers are ready to board. I hope you have plenty of room. It looks like they have gone crazy at the duty-free shop. Okay. Complete. Everyone is accounted for. Time to take off. Right. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. That way we can just go. Not dilly dally. Man, we're already catching air. Oh, the flaps were all the way up. Still, the air today. Pilot, have a nice flight. Is giving us great lift. I was surprised when we took off from uh, EDWU how fast we got up into the air. marker boundary Here we go, we're on course. Yeah, it may have been a grass runway. I just didn't see anything there. So yeah, I probably could have landed in that field next to it and it probably would have counted as a job, but sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just gonna stick to where I can actually see one. Uh, I can set it up for live weather. Don't want to set it for live time though. Ah. 
the hell just happened? We, all of a sudden we're going... What happened? I don't... Yeah, hmm, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna turn off live weather because we can't see anything The point of this I want to I want to see it I Want to be challenged by the weather today Twenty miles an hour of winds today, huh? Twenty mile, twenty uh, not winds. Yeah. I'm uh, very surprised coming to Europe just how, uh, again, you get silly people out there in the world that try to convince everybody, you know, climate change stuff. But I saw a report, somebody was saying, there will be no green spaces in the future, that we're going to cover the whole planet with asphalt and concrete. But what made the what, what made the headline and the, or the story particularly stupid was... They claim that in the next 80 years, 80, not 800, 80, that mankind would cover every square inch of green space on Earth with asphalt and concrete. The people here in Germany have had thousands of years of history, and it still looks like this. Yeah, you have your, your big cities, but... For the most part, so far in this area, it all looks mostly like this. So for anybody to make a silly claim like that, that in 80 years we could possibly cover everything in asphalt or concrete, it's just the most, it's, it's stupid. They've never been out of their basement. They have no idea. They're just, they just pulled that out of their butt. Because again, you've, They've had thousands of years of history here so far. And it's still mostly green. I'm surprised with Rome, too. There's a lot of areas in Italy and Rome that are just densely, densely populated. and But for the most part, yeah, kind of looks like this. Everybody's still got their... They love their villas. They love their farms. That's how I felt. Look, reading the chat, and he's saying, um, so addicted to flying last year, didn't matter how the strong the winds were, or how bad the weather was. Exactly. My first year of Microsoft Flight Simulator with live weather, one, I would run outside every day and I would take pictures north, south, east, and west of the weather. And then I would run back inside and load the simulator up and see how close the simulator was matching the weather every day. And then, yeah, I don't care how cold it is. I wanted to fly in all the conditions. And that's where I really started spending a lot of time during the winter, learning how to emerge, uh, emergency procedures in small general aviation aircraft that have no de-icing capability. And um, I don't know if you've ever done that. If you've ever flown, let's say, the Cessna or any of the other small aircraft in um, super cold conditions to where the plane and the engine itself freezes. 
If you haven't, you need to try it. And the emergency procedure to get out of it, surprisingly, is you have to dive as fast as you can towards the ground. You've got to make the propeller speed up and superheat the engine, unfreeze the engine so that you can try to get to your airport. So you've got to dive and superheat the engine to unfreeze it. Then you need to climb as fast as you can because you might have to dive again. Uh, it's definitely a trip. In 80 years, we'll also have covered every planet in the solar system with asphalt. The asphalt right, too. Yep. Yep. We humans, man. We love covering things in concrete and asphalt. Oh, yeah. I needed to open up um, Bush Talk Radio. Get that logged in so we can catch any sights. Missing out. Can't have music. We gotta have something. Right. There's Bush Talk. Now let's get it loaded in here. Okay, minimize that, that out of the way. Okay, so now that that's open, if we come back to the bush talk and we zoom into where we are here. It will fight us with these little points of interest and this next one right in front of us. Oh, this is the Tudorberg Forest Battle. Varus gave me back my legions. We're head heading right to it. Cool. I wanted to see it anyway. I want to at least be over it. So for those of you that didn't get the audio yesterday. The Battle of the Tudorberg Forest, described as the Varian Disaster by Roman historians, took place in the Tudorberg Forest in 9 CE when an alliance of Germanic tribes ambushed and destroyed three Roman legions and three. their auxiliaries, led by Publius Quinctilius Varus. The alliance was led by Arminius, a Germanic officer of Varus's auxilia. Arminius had acquired Roman citizenship and had received a Roman military education, which enabled him to deceive the Roman commander methodically and anticipate the Roman army's tactical responses. Despite several successful campaigns and raids by the Romans in the years after the battle, they never again attempted to conquer the Germanic <laughs> territories east of the Rhine River, except for Germania Superior. All right, so it was three legions. What is the... Uh, these... Okay, now a Roman legion was 3,000 men. 20 manipoles of 120 men and 10 manipoles of 60 men, together with about 1,200 velites, 300 cavalry, uh, give the mid Republican manipular legion a normal strength of about 4,000, up to 4,500 men. So let's just go with three. Nine, nine thousand men got wiped out by the Germans. And as as you heard, uh-oh, now it's saying YouTube is having a, a streaming problem. They're not receiving enough data. Yeah, you're right, I could sing, but um, knowing YouTube, 
how vicious it is. I could sing something and I would still get flagged for copyright. I could probably even just read lyrics and get flagged for copyright. Like, for example, welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. They're living it up at the Hotel California. Uh, yeah, I'll probably get flagged for that too. Those are copyrighted lyrics. Everything you say anymore will have been said by somebody in the past. So it doesn't matter what you say. I could just be talking, hey, talking to my friend Henny in Germany. Well, Bob from Saskatchewan already said that on YouTube. So uh, Bob's claiming copyright. We really do live in idiocracy sometimes. I'm going to stop the stream for about 10 seconds and restart the stream. I'm getting a YouTube error, and usually when that happens, it, there's been some sort of discontinuity in the line in the transmission. And if I stop it and start it again, like st in the old days, that would happen on your phone. You young people have no idea. So back in the day, you could call somebody and you could have a really bad connection. And it's like, hold on, we have a really crappy connection. Let me call you back. And uh, you can get a better connection. So that's what I'm going to attempt here. Stand by. One, two, three. And we should be back, and YouTube says we now have an excellent connection. So, all right, get back over here to the. Uh... Radio. So we're almost at it. The, the Tudorburg Forest area is just ahead. Passing Dom. I think that's where we're supposed to be landing. Yeah, we're here. There's the airport right there underneath us. D A M M E E D W C. And the wind is blowing which direction? The wind is blowing at. Two, six, eight. Uh, we'll go ten. All right, so kill the autopilot, spin back around. We'll catch the force on the way out. Ah, uh, you know what's going on too? Pardon me one second. My. My graphics card fan. I'm just noticing. Normally it's pretty loud. Because with Microsoft Light Simulator, it will cook your computer. And I just realized... That it's it's toggled the fans off. And we can't have that when we're running this program.
Okay. Much better. Uh, let's keep turning. Oh, uh, once we take off of here, I'll fly over Varus, where Varus got his butt kicked. Then we'll see what else is nearby to go fly over. Wait, where the hell is it? Ah. So the next point of interest over here. The Port of Westphalica, also known as the Westphalian Gap, is a gorge and water gap where the Visa River breaks through the passage between the mountain chains of the Wehen Hills in the west and the Visa Hills in the east. It is located in the district of minden lubecke in North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany. Since 1973, Porta Westphalica is also the name of a town, which was established by merging 15 villages surrounding the gorge. Since 2006, it is a national geotope. The name Porta Westphalica is a Latin term that means gate to Westphalia. Coming from the north, the gorge is the entry to the region of Westphalia. Despite its Latin name, the term was not coined in Roman times, but by scholars in the 19th century. High above the gorge on the west side is a large six-sided stone structure that can be seen from a considerable distance, this is the Emperor William Monument, erected in honor of Emperor William I of Germany and dedicated in 1896. Well, cool. That is directly to our southeast. So we'll head over the forest, the Tudorberg forest. We can head that way. Well, let's see what kind of job we get once we land. Those are the two closest points.
I should change the time. The sun on the horizon there. Put it over our head. Oh, I looked into the drone. Uh, you can get a drone racer for the simulator now. But it's got no first-person view. You can't fly it, Just it seems, just looking through the drone camera. There's no drone camera view. I mean, it's it's all external, and that's not what I want. I want to fly a drone camera from the camera point of view. 500. Nicely done, pilot. Make your way to parking via the taxiway. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. All right, let's get paid. Don't crash. Okay, pilot. The guests are leaving the aircraft now. So it seems we, uh, hmm, let's see. Not enough remaining cargo. Okay, pilot. That's all the passengers off the plane. Thank you. Over and out. Okay. Let's go. Uno momento, senorita. Uh, D. Oh, no, that's a. Search and rescue, I think. EDLO time sensitive. Oh, we want to sightsee. Cargo. EDVR. Yeah, that's got a nice runway. 2,520 pounds and that mechanical, we're taking mechanical parts. Good day to you, pilot. The flight plan has now been signed off. As soon as all the cargo is safely on board, you can get on your way. 2,520. Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred.
Okay. So our payload is set. And we'll get started up again and transporter. Cargo is loaded. You can start your mission. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Right? All right. Uh, sorry, I missed you. You have a great day. Uh, and he's got to take off. He's got m important things to do. <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll have an opportunity in the coming days to get some nice flying in with Henning. And hopefully Hans will pop up. We can all fly together. All right. So once we get in the air, we're going to head back south and See if we can get over the Tudorberg forest area. And then we're going to fly east towards our payout. And we're going to try to hit that gorge. Probably backed up. Yeah. Pilot from dispatch. Fly safe. A little too late for that. And go over to Okay, so Tudorberg Forest But yeah, there's some mountains up ahead. I was say it's pretty flat, but no, there's some mountains right there. After all this time, you got to wonder if they picked the area clean. Like, have they... You know, or it, could you still go there and do archaeology and find some, possibly some cool Roman stuff? So they've left only this area forested. Uh, who knows how it looked in the past, but the Battle of the Teutoburg this Forest, is it. described as the Varian disaster by Roman historians, took place in the Teutoburg Forest in 9 CE when an alliance of Germanic tribes. Am I got that. All right, 
Now we're going to go find this gorge, the Westphalia Gorge. So it's Tuesday, and you know what that means if you're a Twitter subscriber. Good for the heart day. I think you know what I mean. Okay. So we're heading back west. And the gorge is here. Uh, but our job is still taking us. See, once we get on our vector, see what it looks like. And now it looks like we're completely going away, but we're going to be making a turn this way. Yeah, you can't even sing cover tunes. So, uh, yeah, Henning suggested that I sing since we don't have music and I'm upset with Pretzel. And he said I could sing, but you can't do cover tunes. So I'd have to make up my own crap. And, and I'm not a singer and I'm not a musician. So I was thinking, yeah, I could sing. And I was thinking about uh, singing Neon Moon by a... Uh, Brooks and Dunn, you know, when this, I don't even want to embarrass myself, but when the sun goes down on, was it my side of town? That lonesome feeling comes to my door and the whole world turns blue. There's a rundown bar across the railroad tracks. There's a table for two way in the back. Or I sit alone, think of losing you. Well, I spend most every night beneath the light of a neon moon. So if you lose your one and only, there's always room here for the lonely. What does he say? Just let your... Just let your broken dreams dance in and out of the beams of a neon moon. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Hey. Whenever I see actors with the name Horst, it always cracks me up. And I look out my windscreen. And look look what's right in front of, in front of us. Horst. There was an actor, uh, like 70s actor, like British films or foreign films. German actor, and his name was Horst. I think 
That's where I got it from, and that's uh, he was cracking me up. Worst. What's her name? It's probably like John for us, you know. Oh, yeah, Horst. That's a common name. Destel. All right, so looking back on this, yeah, now we're kind of headed right towards it. If you're tuning in, I want to thank you. Because I mean, I I guess if you're if you're into the flying thing, you might enjoy it. I if you're into the which I should have been doing sightseeing and checking out, well, what does Germany look like from an airplane? Cool, but it's such a niche thing. And so if you have happened to tune in, you've never tuned in before, I want to say one, hello. Hello. Two, thank you. Thank you for even taking a minute out of your day to tune in to me flying and getting more flying experience. Ultimately, that's what it's all about. You know, I've made up the sky dude and the, you know, the reason to have the panel to, to document the flights, but ultimately it's, it's still all about learning to fly. And so, um, by having a live stream, it forces me to get up every day and try to get on and at least do a couple of hours of flying every day. As these are have been mostly about sightseeing i haven't been spending as much time let's say looking at the charts or looking at weather or weather or creating flight plans and uh if you need help with anything we can get as technical as we want so these live streams aren't the most educational if you're tuning in you're like well he's not teaching me anything well, it is, you know, yeah, again, I'm not spending that much time being that detailed. But, again, if you're new and nobody's helping you on the other channels and you need somebody to, to try to help you, I, I will absolutely do the best I can. Uh, I have been trying to learn and learn and learn and learn as much as I can about flying it. I've absorbed a lot and, um, you know most of the basic concepts navigation anyway if there's a subject that you don't know or you're stuck on something or you need help with something or you need somebody to fly with then yeah please like and subscribe and jump into the chat say hello uh, i don't bite uh i consider myself a noob um i'm not actually a noob anymore because i've been at this for several years now and I know, uh, well, I I know a considerable amount now, so I can't say I'm a complete noob. Um, so just out of the noob phase, and into the, hey, I kind of know what I'm doing phase. And I try to fly as many things as as I can. Uh, in the first couple of years, um flying you know everything anything i could get into and i i've done that a lot with microsoft flight simulator i kind of stick to the caravan when i'm doing the neofly stuff because it's the plane that allows you to make the most amount of money when you're starting out i do airliner flying i love the the a320 and i've even at one point uh, i've got to reload it 
Now this is a forest. Forest. Wow. They just left all the trees on the hill and stretching in both directions. I like it. Don't change. Uh, so I like flying airliners. I'm not completely, completely familiar with the MCDUs on like the, the Boeing, the, the big uh, internationals, but I can figure them out. I'm not a, completely lost. But with the A320, got a lot of hours in the A320 and um, program, programming the MCDU. And I need to get back to practicing a lot of that again. Because uh, they've changed it now with updating all the Garmin's and da 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 Anyway, certain things don't work quite the way I remember. And so I need some refreshers with that. But, um, but I do like airliner flying. Mostly practicing night flying. Uh, understanding SIDS and stars. Understanding... Uh, charts the maps we're still getting some some lag here and i think i have everything down i mean super low some days it performs like a champ and some day some days not so much and i can have things all set to ultra and everything is running just fantastic but not today and i've already kind of hit as low as i can go and it's still giving me fits So, yeah, I hate turning anything even lower. Must restart the simulator? Well, we can't do that. Is there anything else I can turn off out here? The Porta Westfalica, also mm. known as the Westphalian Gap, is a gorge and water gap where the Visa River breaks through the passage between the mountain chains of the Wehen Hills in the west and the Visa Hills in the east. It is located in the district of minden lubecke in North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany. Since 1973, Porta Westfalica is also the name of a town, which was established by merging 15 villages surrounding the gorge. Since 2006, it is a national geotope. The name Porta Westfalica is a Latin term that means gate to Westphalia. Coming from the north, the gorge is the entry to the region of Westphalia. Despite its Latin name, the term was not coined in Roman times, but by scholars in the 19th century. High above the gorge on the west side is a large six-sided stone structure that can be seen from a considerable distance. This is the Emperor William Monument, erected in honor of Emperor William I of Germany and dedicated in 1896. That's it. Right there. Three, four, five, six. Down to your shorts. Seats. Yeah. All right. Let's take a good look at this thing. Somebody sprung a leak on the roof. <laughs> what an interesting thing to add to your building. 
And I wonder if it is a rock or if it actually looks like this. You know, in the simulator, I don't know if this is actually a point of interest in Microsoft. So it might look like that. They're saying, but it's done the same thing to pyramids in Mexico, where it'll take the shape and then it'll apply a building over it. So this is, she says, she described it as a rock. A six-sided rock. And so, I don't, um, I suppose I could pull up a photograph of it. But I would imagine that it's a rock and not a, doesn't have this external structure and windows on it at all. I don't, but I would suspect not. You would have said a six-sided structure. Okay. So, uh, now to get to our job. And actually, let's look around real quick. Here. So, directly in front of us, we have a, ma a mausoleum. The Mausoleum of Prince Ernst in Stathagen, Lower Saxony, is a mausoleum erected by Ernst of Schaumburg and his widow Hedwig of Hesse Castle in the years 1620 to 1627. Its unusual architecture and the resurrection monument by Adrian de Vries make it a site of European rank. The crypt was used as burial place of the House of Schaumburg and the House of Schaumburg Lip until 1915. The mausoleum, attached to the chancel of Stathagen Parish Church St. Martini, is a domed heptagon <laughs> in Italian Renaissance style. Saint of Martinis. Giovanni Maria Nossini. Four of its walls are furnished with Latin inscribed epitaphs for Prince Ernst, his parents, and his wife, framed by ediculars with Italian marble columns. The central monument by Audrian de Vries consists of a huge pedestal bearing the cenotaph of Prince Ernst, simultaneously conceived as the Tomb of Christ. The cenotaph is yeah. surrounded by four drowsing Roman guards, and a larger than life figure of Christ triumphant surmounts its top. The dome, painted with 14 musician angels, represents heaven oh that's nice saint of martini another nuclear power plant very nice and over here something to do with tennis the halley open is a men's tennis tournament held in halley north rhine westphalia germany Sparenberg Castle, also known as the Sparenberg, is a restored fortress in the district of Bielefeld, Germany. It is situated on the Sparenberg Hill altitude in the Teutoburg Forest and towers 60 meters above the city center. Its current appearance mainly originated in the 16th and 19th century. The Sparenberg is considered to be Bielefeld's landmark. The above-ground parts of the Sparenberg can be visited year-round, free of charge, Oh, the we're going the there. Castle can be visited daily from April to October. The Botanische Garten Bielefeld is a municipal botanical garden located beside Hunnenberg Telecommunication Tower is a 164-meter telecommunication tower of Deutsche Telekom AG on Hunnenberg near Steinhager is a type of German gin, a spirit flavored with juniper berries. The name is derived from the Westphalian municipality of Steinhagen, the only place where it is permitted to be produced. <laughs> For centuries, local distilleries sold schnapps made up of grain and fermented must of the numerous juniper shrubs growing on the slopes of the Teutoburg forest. By edict of 1688, the great elector Frederick William of Brandenburg, in his capacity as Count of Ravensburg, granted the inhabitants of Steinhagen the exclusive privilege to distill liquor. During the 19th century, about 20 companies were founded in the village. Today, only two manufacturers still produce gin. Steinhager is typically sold in long brown earthenware 1744 bottles and in glass bottles made to look like earthenware. Since 1989, the Steinhager geographical indication is protected by a European Economic Community Directive. The alcohol content is usually 38% ABV but sometimes higher. 
the European Union has set a minimum of 37.5% ABV for it. Oh, Senator Gallagher in the chat room asks if I do Vatsim. No, uh, I'm intimidated at the moment. I really shouldn't be. At least give me something to talk about and people to hear on these live streams. To be uh, using an air traffic control system. But I am, I am not yet comfortable with ATC speak and I do everything really slow and you know I, I listen to all these guys and everybody talks so fast and you know when they're reading off runway stuff and um I'm just not up to speed so uh, maybe I'll make that a goal an extra new year's resolution this year to continue that part of my training to really crack down on that. Another one is using the E6B. I want to learn how to use the E6B handheld computer. They call it, well, it is a computer, but it's more like a slide rule. The E6B slide rule for aircraft. Um, yeah, so practicing uh, air traffic control speak. So that I can do Vatsim this year. I say, is that overspeed my aircraft? We're really going up. Well, plane. Nowhere to go. All right, so we'll come back to those castles. I really want to see castles or towers or anything like that. So we're going to have to come back to that. We need to finish this job up and get paid. And we're right there. And EDVR, I need to call it in. Speaking of air traffic control. EDVR, I'm right over it. It says that one's, those are closer. The wind is blowing from uh, the west still. Called in, and let's go ahead and turn off the autopilot. Slow down, grab her coffee, relax. Relax. Enter it there. If you don't know that's him, you're tuning in, you're like, what are you talking about? Well, sounds cool. You can do some more training and do this Vatsim thing, but what is it? Vatsim is an an air traffic control system run by people who like doing air traffic control for flight simulators. Can you believe it? The flight sim community is the wildest, most amazing uh, gaming community in the world. One, because it's a real world thing, but they're so diehard about everything you know and i can understand that if they are if you are also a real world person uh pilot as well um or air traffic control that it's just good to have a system like that set up to constantly be practicing um so yeah it's an entire air traffic control system set up to operate simulated virtual airways. That's another thing you don't see me do on these particular live streams is uh, going from job to job. You'll, you 
you will notice that I'm just using the direct to on the GPS and I fly direct to. And I don't, and I haven't been concerning myself with air spaces or flying on uh, to and from nav, specific nav points or on, I don't know what they call them over here in the, in the United States, they're called Victor's. The Victor Airline, you know the air, the air, the air highways. I was asking Henny earlier if he knew where I can get, or what he uses for charts. Too much talking, not enough thinking. Got to deploy the flaps. Got the engine off at the moment. Got to bleed off the speed. Five hundred. Place for a tree. Dispatched a pilot. That looked like a butter smooth landing from here. Please exit the runway and taxi to parking. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. All right. I'm glad you liked it. Okay. It paid. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Fine. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. Fantastic. As long as they're happy, I am happy. Let's get out of here. How yeah, much? How much can we back up still? Good. Yeah, I should have done this on the last um, runway. I wasn't thinking far enough ahead, per usual. Okay, find another job. I miss it. We have time. Okay. Those are parachute missions, huh? We I don't think we've ever done a parachute mission. It says we can. 41 miles, they'll pay us $20,000. We why, I might as well. I've never tried one, so let's see if we can do one. Uh, I wanted to go back that way anyway, I guess. Free flight disabled. Climb to 10,000 feet, AGL. 
in fly over the DZ and 5178 27. I don't know how to put coordinates into the GPS. Speed 70 miles per hour being knots. Set parking brake to let the jumpers out. Let's see if they've got the ability to put it in coordinates in Garmin now. How do you go to specific coordinates? Have little nav map open, put a waypoint there on the map and steer the plane towards it. Flight plan using only coordinates, Garmin G1000. Flight plan using only coordinates, MSFS 2020, YouTube creators, developers, terms of blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, let's, let me open up this video. Oh, my ears. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the channel once again. Welcome to the delayed flight. I sure, cool. Thank you very much. I've already subscribed. I like it. Flight plan using only coordinates. Found something extremely interesting, and this is about, and it will be short. And please be careful. Yes. Where we are right now. It is not the right moment. It is not the right moment where we are right now. Sooner or later, be patient. Okay. For okay. For the fans of the channel, and uh, I will tell you where we are right now. Yeah, this is a miracle, actually. To be honest, I was about to leave. Okay, it is Sunday morning. But uh, this is so important that I want to make a short clip hey, about pilot, it. Hey, the Parachute Club are. needs our exactly. services again. One second. Parachutists are boarding. Stand by. Howdy. How you doing? Howdy. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Howdy. Hello. Nice. They're quiet. Okay, everyone is on board. You are good to go. All right, let me pause the simulator there. And get back to this gentleman over here. Exactly. Please be patient. Now, the clip is about flight plan, but a very precise flight plan, an extremely precise flight plan. So, how do you add coordinates Easy now. Your flight plan. I'm new. D easy. Coordinate. Take it easy. I'm learning. An exact point on the map in MSFS 2020. Okay. So this is the Google map, as you may know, isn't it? Where I'm sitting. Where no. All right. Now it is not uh, the moment. Please don't insist. Okay. I mean, don't insist because soon I must leave. Okay. This is a place on planet Earth <laughs> to pinpoint. Take it easy. And you want, first of all, to find the coordinates i got it okay map, and then you want to fly above this area so you go here okay add place mark here it is now here you see the coordinates latitude and longitude okay if i drag this actually okay left click you see have a look here latitude and longitude please okay you see the coordinates change okay the coordinates change you want to find the specific place let us suppose that here is my house what to say let us suppose that here is my airport actually okay. or here is my house is my cafe whatever so i want to fly above this place okay i want here so now have a look Okay, so what I'm doing in NeoFly here, it says, drag this over to my main screen one second. Hard to read over there. Okay, it says that our coordinate is 52.13 semicolon 8.27. I have no idea what any of that means. 
you know, I understand, okay, it, it, that means latitude and longitude, but I haven't taken that class, and that's as much as I know. That these numbers equate to latitude and longitude. But, and that's as much as I know. So hopefully he's going to say now, he's up on us, he's awful. He hasn't had his coffee or tea. But either way, he said it'll make it quick, and he's going to show us possibly how to enter those, maybe into the Garmin, and go right to that point. Which would be really awesome to learn how to do. So let's listen, have a listen. While he's talking, I'm going to just hang out on the outside of the plane and smoke a cigarette. Follow along. Uh, I would love to show you the, the video. Uh, maybe this I, is the easiest way I could... Maybe I can. Let's see. And hopefully the gentleman will understand that this is for educational purposes and he won't uh, get too upset with us if we play his video in my video. Sir, I hope you don't mind. Thank you for creating a video like that, which might teach us something. Okay, so you should be seeing his video now. Or part of the screen. Let's see here. Yeah. Find uh, we will use uh, Google as a scratch pad. It is called. Yeah, exactly. This is what we will do. So take first the latitude. Okay, here. Copy. Now, of course, you can with. Oh, I have to pause. I have to take the call. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Our... Uh huh. I'm sorry. No. Let me see. You know, all right. That sounds nice. You hear, you hear that, listeners? Tamales are up for grab. Go ahead. Oh, I'll just call one on me. You're back from Robin Hood yet? No, because I try to retake my Okay. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Real world stuff taken care of. Get back to our education. Right click paste, but please keep this in mind. I would prefer yeah. that you press CTRL plus V. Victor, CTRL plus V. Here it is. Okay. We go back to the map. Now take the longitude the same way. Okay. Copy. Now, please, this is extremely important. No space. Okay. I mean, you paste here there will be no space if you press space it will just be a failure so backspace and exactly here okay you have this option of course paste but i would prefer as i said that you press ctrl v which is actually the command for paste ctrl v okay that's it no space in between so take this now copy Up. what is this I don't know. These are the coordinates, latitude and longitude. It is a specific point on the map. Okay, so you want to fly, to park, to whatever above this place, which can be as well your house or your monument. That or this fly. parachute zone we need to fly to. Any place on the map. Any place. So, now, okay. unfortunately, I must exit, but I will exit. It is just fine with me. Escape. That means I lose everything here. Okay main menu continue so we go to world map and have in mind that you have three options such specific point with coordinates you can either set as a destination or you can set as an arrival or it will be a wave point that you add on your flight plan okay so the truth is that i would like this uh, specific uh, coordinates to be my arrival okay it is not the moment right now to reveal what we are doing exactly but anyhow let us say that our departure is Hatserim there was a tutorial about this Hatserim isn't it with the Garmin one of the last clips it was okay 
this runway I liked very much. I mean, the non existing runway, 30 left. And I said this one is a departure. Excellent. Now, have a look here. Search. The cursor is blinking. Really? Moment of truth. CTRL plus V. Here is your coordinates. Here is the coordinates that you selected. Bravo. Click Bravo. Here. And then this Bravo. option appears. Set as departure or set as arrival. Set as arrival. That's it. I want to know how to do it in the Garmin. You leave from LL62. Okay. Uh, the runway is out of use. And you want to have a look at this specific place on the map that we pinpointed with its exact coordinates. Okay. Now let us suppose that you want to set this uh, wave point as your departure. Okay. Arrival. Very popular, this hat setting lately. L L62. Okay, here it is. Now this is your arrival. The airport now is your arrival, okay? And here again, CTRL-V. Why CTRL-V? Because if you press right click, you know the most common way to copy and paste, <laughs> nothing happens just for this reason. So the keyboard command of paste is CTRL-V. CTRL-V. Here it is. Click here on your coordinates and now you have these options set as departure set as arrival or Bravo. add this wave point so we said this is our arrival okay now nah, that was a mistake of mine uh, no uh, we said this is our departure you see again mm. so uh, l62 okay yeah, that was a mistake of mine. CTRLV is this one. Set this departure. And of course, since there is no airport here, since there is no airport here now, this would be more precise. I mean, since there is no operational airport here, of course, you will start airborne, isn't it? You will start, let's say, from 1 to 5,000 feet. So. This way, I showed you how to set coordinates on MSFS, either as your departure or as your arrival. Now, let us suppose that you want to add another wave point. So, let us go once again here. Okay. However, it looks a little bit like an airport, isn't it? I mean... So you select an add picture, point and then do the same thing. You click into it, go control V, airport, I mean, and you put in your coordinate. Here, isn't it? And it will Anyhow, you want transpose the coordinates with the new as the new add so point. So now we set right? another point is add. Let's say wave point this time. We change the coordinates. Okay. Here are the coordinates. I repeat once again that we use uh, at the moment uh, Google not as a search. I have to pause right there, um, or I'm. A be pausing in here and I'm going to blow this up and hopefully I uh it's so far away on another screen I can't see how he's how he's putting it in there machine but there's a scratch pad okay uh with the periods or not he said These no spaces our, our coordinates copy paste don't forget so it is no putting the degree in there space. don't press 31 degrees and again copy 12 paste. minutes no interval something like that okay. no interval let me pause so that's why well, I would have to figure out how to type in the degree thing or do it the way he's doing it, but I already have my numbers. I just needed the proper keystroke for the degrees north, 34 degrees. I'm assuming 
These can be feet or normally isn't it described in minutes. North and east. So these are the coordinates, isn't it? Copy. Click here. You cannot right click as I said and uh, paste, but you can press CTRL plus V. Here it is. And now we choose this option. Add. 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 Okay. That's it. I'm really curious if I can add more coordinates like this, but uh, this is not our tutorial right now. Maybe it is possible. Actually, this was an airport as far as I understood. Oh, I was hoping. Oh, I was praying that he was going to show us how to do it in the Garmin. The only downside, and this is fantastic to know uh, how to do what he has just taught us. Thank you, sir. Let me grab my coffee here and uh, raise my mug up to you. Cheers. Thank you for teaching us something. Here's to your health, well-being, and prosperity. Okay. But, so how do we do that and not lose our mission? Uh, Neofly can be really touchy, okay? So we've got the job to take the parachutist to... All I've got is... 52, 13, 8, 27. I don't have degrees. I don't have north. It just uh, in the mission that it's uh, here. See? DZ at 52, 13, semicolon 8.27. So we will get a uh, the simple way to do this. The non-precise way is to uh, use the, an, uh, another program that comes with NeoFly that you can get called Sky for Sim. Okay. And I have it. And it is an add-on with NeoFly. Let me go back to the simulator now. This is another way to do it. You open your Sky for Sim app after you've launched the server. And it'll show you where you need to go. So that's us there. Zoom out. We need to go 40 miles to the south. West. Okay. Right here. Here is where we need to fly. So we can fly right there. It's not a problem. But if there was a way to learn how to put it into the coordinates, into the GPS, to make sure. Um, zooming out, let's say something like this. Let me. Uh, we start our flight and we start flying this way. And I can get us pointed in the right direction. And these maps, you have to keep, the closer you get, the more you have to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And then little discrepancies in alignment start become really huge. So it's kind of pain in the butt sometimes to get exactly where you need to be. And if they're giving us coordinates, it can be it can be tough. Um So that's the simple way to do it is just just fly to the marker here. Keep this open, minimize and keep zooming in as you get closer and closer and closer. And hopefully you can hit it. Okay. Put that up in the corner. And we need to be at uh, 10,000 feet AGL. We're at 180 feet now. Um, bu 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 um. Um. 
So 9,820 feet. Need to be at a precise altitude to do this. I don't think you can get more precise than that. Can't dial it in any tighter. There's no inner ring. That's as close as I can get it to that. I'll take one look out there, last look out there, see if there's a way to do it in the Garmin. Okay, so if we were to leave and back out and go to the main menu and set, follow that gentleman's instructions, but we don't have the actual proper format at the moment, all we've got is some numbers. And I don't know if it could find what we want based on that. We'll have to try that some other time, I guess. Let's see. Enter GPS coordinates on a Garmin Nuvi. First touch where to. Touch the coordinates icon. They have a coordinates icon, but that's using a... Da -da 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 -da. E1000, waypoints by latitude and longitude. Can't reach the page. No, entering waypoints. Oh, here's an interesting question. Can I get GPS coordinates of where I am in the game? I need to go find that. I just I'm curious. I know if you have an FMS, you should be able to get current position. Like in an airliner. No, so so far I'm not saying anything. They've included a physical keyboard in the waypoint. Only GPS currently available. Well, we'll have to work on that one later, I guess. Anyway, I wasted way too much time. So let's get going and see if we can get this. See if we can get this at all. Again, I've never done a never done a parachute mission. Climb to the requested altitude and fly to the drop zone.
Why are you so laggy? Baby. All right, flight level change and set the heading. And we'll have to adjust that. Settles down. All right. And turn my heading to try to get it to match up in the upper right hand corner again in the little map. You see the red arrow? I'm trying to get the red arrow to point down towards the little blue button down here. Turning my heading knob to try to line those two points up. And the closer you get, like with the VOR, the more adjustments you're going to have to make. At 2,000 feet. And we'll need to be going 70 knots to get there. Field Marshal Rommel Barracks is up ahead somewhere, right here. Field Marshal Rommel Barracks. The Field Marshal Rommel Barracks, Augustdorf, is a German army military base located in Augustdorf in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany, and the largest base of the German army. The brigade staff and most of the units of the 21st Panzer Brigade are located there. Around 4,300 soldiers serve there. The base is located on the southern edge of the Teutoburg Forest, the scene of one of the most iconic battles of the Roman era, and directly adjacent to the Senelager training area where German soldiers train together with British soldiers and other NATO partners. Named in honor of Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, the street address of the base is GFM. Rommelstrasse 1. The base shares its name with the, a similarly named base, the, closed down in 2004. The actual, that's the actual Teutoburg Forest. I wonder if it runs along this whole way. Must be all it. Because the other battle took, the battle took. Yeah, the battle took place up here. It's saying this is the act this is the forest, I guess it runs the whole way. A range of low force to deal, so I guess, yeah. But Okay, 5,600 feet.
try to 70 knots now. Hello. Sixty-seven. Um, a little bit more. Do 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 do. I probably should have kept this while we're climbing. Do the climb first. You are at 3,000 feet from the requested altitude. It's time for them to make their final pre-jump checks. Three twenty-one in the afternoon. You know what that means? That one minute ago it was three twenty. So, to all my smoker friends out there, cheers. All right, here's nine eight. Nine eight. No, that's nine eight four. Slow the heck.
Now, let me pull, let's see if this makes a difference here. Pull the propeller back. We don't need torque. We don't need the, yeah, we just really don't need a whole lot of oomph. That puts us at 104, bring the throttle back. Try to slow down to 70 and then see if we can hold it. We actually need to go, yeah, it's about 60.8. Stall. Stall. And we're getting stall. How do you slow down that much then? Put the RPM back and maintain. No. Hmm. having a tough time okay let's see I go on full power or more power and then put a flap in it's down no Oh no. We're right there.
Hey, are we getting closer? Need to adjust this thing. Like I said, see how now that we start zooming in, we're off. Four degree change. Three more. Right, right. All right, back to speed, fast. Verensal Abbey is a monastery mm. of Benedictine nuns located near Riotberg in the district of Gutterslohr in North Rhine-Westphalia. Germany. The monastery was founded in 1902 by the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration within the Benedictine Confederation. Later, however, the community developed a way of life more in keeping with that of the Buranese congregation, which it joined in 1982. Verensel was given the status of abbey in 1948. Besides the traditional duties of hospitality, the nuns are occupied in theological work and various handicrafts. Don't know exactly, but I wanted to stop anytime we're directly over something. That could be it in the central area right there. Looks to be more like downtown. So looking around, that's kind of isolated. That that could be the abbey there, kind of structure. I don't know. We're up high, and the graphics on the buildings are set really low at the moment. But cool. All right, back to the cockpit. Back to what we're doing. Oh. Just in here. Off the breeze. And unpause. All right. 70. No, don't go too. Touchy. Touchy, touchy, touchy.
Okay. We can keep it right in there for the remainder of the way. Then all we need to do is just back a tiny bit. what though i don't know what the i don't actually know what the agl what the ground level is at the point we're going to you're supposed to be ten thousand feet over and now i'm worried that i mean i have no idea without a detailed flight chart are we to know I might not be at the right altitude. I should have paid attention when she said you're at 3,000 feet below, and I should have made a note right then and there exactly what our altitude was. So. All I can do now is hope that when we get there, it's kind enough where it's like, you you better go up or down. If it doesn't trigger, we'll try going up a couple more hundred feet. That doesn't work, I guess. Circle and try to go down a couple hundred feet. Into the butt. I don't know why. I wonder why they haven't set it up to enter coordinates. And you would think with something like a Garmin... That would be one of the things it could immediately do, like on day one. Before adding in clickable waypoints and click to airport, nearest airport, nearest this, and weather, and all these other things, you would think that a GPS system, the very first thing you should ever be able to do, is enter in a coordinate. What a weird weird world we live in sense man just a couple degrees zoom in good One more two more somebody's flying a helicopter right above my house I can feel it. I live very, very, well, not as close as I could, but uh, relatively speaking, very close to an airport. I always hear interesting things. Then we have the army, uh, air, uh, army air field. That's not too far either. Okay, good. We're getting closer. Zoom in. Adjust. Three, three degrees.
five degrees. Slip it. Ten degrees. South. Then back a couple of degrees, back a couple of degrees, and we're not, we're there, we're not, we're right there. And oh, we're going too fast, we're not getting any audibles. Uh, um. All right. Now it becomes a pain in the butt. Okay, so now I got to zoom out and find out where we're at. In the butt. Around while trying to maintain the right altitude, while trying to maintain the right speed. I think we're gonna have to write this one off. And I don't think there's any Yeah. I don't think there's any visual indicators out here. But I'll look. See if there's anything to help us out out here. So, hmm. No fun. I'm not going to power climb now. There's 10,000. At the right speed. Down.
Well, we're at 10,000 feet now, and we were going the right speed. So, oh. Is this supposed to hit the brakes? Yeah. This one might take some practice because that's nah, not working. So, let's try to waste all of our time on that. But I had to try it. We haven't done it before. So, some things to know next time. Pay attention to when she says you're 3,000 feet. So, you get your AGL right. And. Remember to press the parking brake, I guess, when you're right over it. I don't know what I did wrong. And also need to figure out how to be able to... Okay, you were in the DZ at a good altitude. I am? Reduce your speed to 70 knots. What? Give them the green light. I'll be damned. I just got lucky. I just got lucky. Nah, so we don't see anything. In Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, 20, maybe we will. Uh, we weren't even anywhere near close to the zone. Look you know how far away we were. Okay, everyone is out. You can land. Don't fly into the drop zone while parachutists are still in the air. Stall. Stall. Well. Stall. 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 So, thank you, computer. I'm not, you know, it, 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 but you see how far away we are from the actual drop point according to the map. We were already over here at Stockton. So, that's weird. They should put a better ring then, like to, to show you better, but. I would have never guessed. Keep flying in the in the area. Well, okay, cool. So we got paid. And that is check off having done. Check off. Uh doesn't say we have to return. Maybe we have to land and shut down because it hasn't credited us with it yet. All right, so let's find nearest airport. EDLZ. Wind is blowing from west. Pick seven. And they have no air traffic control. So. Let us begin our descent. Kill the engine. We don't need that anymore. And just glide our way down. I don't need this anymore. That's a neat circular design on the town. See how they started. 
It's still, actually, everything as you keep going out, you can still see a circular pattern. I like it. Going too fast. I wanted to look at the ground and... It's out of, uh... Fight or fall speed. I'm, uh, if you're tuning in today and you're like, where's the music, man? It's awful quiet. You, uh, imagine you're in an electric plane again. Well, the second part, yes. I've got the engine noise turned down because it just annoys me. And we're in the future now. They have electric airplane engines now. So, yeah. I am imagining now that we have... Uh, a fully electric engine, and we don't have to listen to that noise anymore. And on the music thing, uh, pretzels now not helping. Um, pretzel. Okay, they said we have we offer live streamers YouTube safe music. And they do. But they got me by using the keyword live stream. Meaning that music that I play on this live stream is only protected from copyright strikes during the live stream. But once you're done live streaming, it has to process. So, you know, so this is why I'm almost going to claim fraud on them. I paid for several months, so, I, you know, whatever. And I loved the music. Truly loved, loved the music. All right, then, uh, but, you know, and then you have to deal with copyright claims. They come up and they're like, well, sorry, we can't guarantee that our stuff is going to be 100% YouTube safe. It's not a perfect world. So in the eventually, in eventuality, it does happen. Here's a dispute form. Okay, well, it's been happening. And now it's happening with more frequency. And now, like, every track during a live stream is flagging. And it's not sharing. It's just, no, we won't let you monetize your stream. And now they're like, well, like we said, we are only selling live stream safe music. So once you're done with your live stream and you archive it, it becomes a video. Therefore, it's not licensed. And any of our artists can then claim copyright and get share on top of it, which I wouldn't mind if they actually shared, get the share option. But again, they're just blocking me altogether, every track, and refusing to let it uh, their music play. Um, I mean, to let me monetize. Now, Pretzel is a song trader company, and now just today looking for another alternative to find uh, YouTube safe music for your live streams or your and videos. You know, once the live stream is done and you're archived, you've archived it and it's now a video. Uh, is it still safe from copyright? And I saw that Stream Elements is offering it. That wasn't the softest landing I've seen. Stream Elements is now offering background music. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. And I noticed that they're partnering with Song Trader. So the same company that runs Pretzel and offering YouTube safe music is now partnering with Stream Elements to provide, they're calling it background music, for your live streams and videos and saying it's copyright protected. So, I don't know why they just didn't change Pretzel to do the same thing. And so now I'm a little bit upset. And I canceled my Pretzel subscription today. And I'll look into what Song Trader is doing with Stream Elements. But again, I'm really upset with Song Trader in itself for not saying, 
hey, we're going to change how pretzel works now. And we're going to also offer you, maybe for an extra couple of bucks, we'll offer you protection once it becomes a video. But they didn't. And then they turned off the dispute form. So you can't file to have them help you get the content that you play from their app disputed. They won't dispute for you now. And now you can't submit a dispute form and show them what music or what titles are being flagged by other companies. And then even some of the copyright claims that are coming up are from song trader themselves. So not real happy today. So I'm already looking for somebody else because I don't know that I want to deal with song trader anymore. Uh, going back to running my own radio station would be too expensive now. And there's no point because I what I have to play on my own radio station is all commercial music. And ASCAP and UMG and EMI, EMI still haven't created any sort of licensing for you as a YouTube person. On a song by song basis, you can go pay for licensing. But again, now you're doing song by song. I can't afford to pay for, and pick and choose every single song and create a license for every single usage. And then, then there's rules like, well, was it done as a one-time thing or is it a, a daily, you know, you have all these other subcategories. So there's just nothing simple. Let's see if we get paid. I'm over here yakking away and wondering what am I doing and why am I not, uh, why isn't the job ticking off? Let's see what it does now. Job done. Good. That's Have what you we ever considered jumping? We expect this group will want to go up again soon. No, uh, everything is on board. I have considered it. It the idea doesn't frighten me in any way. I mean, we need to purchase some fuel. And I guess we'll just kind of wrap it up there now. It's four o'clock. So let me, oh. to save your backup, what you're doing, if you don't trust NeoFly when it closes to save it, come down here to settings and then backup progression here. Okay. And then you can close it. You can either come down here and hit the exit and exit that way or just close it. Here, shut this down. I'm surprised. The simulator itself now didn't give me a a close. That's a real drag. That's everything's off. You. That's funny. Off, off. So I don't know why Microsoft now won't close. But oh well. If we lose a couple of hours here and there. I mean, it happens. Uh, meaning on our pilot um, profile, I'll show you in here in a second. It 
keeps track of how many hours you've flown. You get your log. It's a pretty nice feature. So up here under your pilot profile. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track. So I don't know if it added or not. But we're at 1,235 flight hours. This is my log book. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Yeah, I shouldn't have moved it. There we go. Must have been doing some training. Cessna. Some Airbus flying. Airbus, Airbus. There's the 787 Dreamliner. Let's move between that. I must have been doing freelance, maybe. Bush flying. Lots of Skyhawk. I must be doing a lot of training. Lots of Airbus flying here. Aerobat was doing. Icon flying. How far this thing goes back? It'd be everything. Really? I tried that plane as my first flight? The Dar? Daher? Yeah, the icon. That makes sense. And the training with the 152. Icon moving to the 172. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, we'll pick it up here tomorrow. thank you for tuning in please like and subscribe every every penny helps and uh i would i would really appreciate it i really need the help i hate begging i really do i've been bad i'm not one of these people too that was ever good at um selling things either like you know a lot of these guys on their, their channels uh that are successful like hey you want some swag i got t-shirts and i got this and i got that and when i used to do radio i i still had a hard time doing any of that i don't i never like begging and i don't like that but right now i do need the help i really really need the help badly literally every penny counts right at the moment so please 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 like and subscribe okay um off to do dinner and tonight um Possibly not live streaming. I have friends that want to play Star Trek online. And I have avoided that for five years now. So we'll see. Probably will not live stream. I don't know. I want to do some Sim stuff again real soon. They've released the uh, castle. Well, it's castle exteriors kind of thing, and it's it's very limited. It's a small little kit. But my wife was like, I'm surprised. You love building castles. I'm surprised you haven't been all over mucking about with The Sims trying to build some, some castles and whatever. And yeah, I haven't really got to that. But it's something I kind of like to do. I don't know if you'll have any interest in that or not. All right, my friends, acquaintances, and hopefully subscribers, uh, I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Genius, this guy dude out for episode, what, 103, 104? What does it say there? 104. Getting there. Adios.